What's going on YouTube? Kevin here from TGI Tech Day with the second video in my build vlog series. This is going to be the pretty much pre-setup for actually building the PC, although it still totally counts for um, building it. It's just going to be in this video installing the processor, the RAM, the CPU cooler, which is probably going to take a majority of this video because it's a all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, it's not a simple uh, heat sink that you can just uh, put on there. Um, Gonna have that and gonna see if it posts, which basically means if it turns on. Um, if something doesn't turn on there, I'm pretty worried because that means something is fundamentally wrong with the system. The CPU, the RAM, the cooler are the bare basics that the computer needs to run. And if that doesn't work, then we have some issues. But um, I'm gonna start off this video by ex explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing here. A lot of the stuff that I've been researching over the past few months has been courtesy of Linus Tech Tips and watching him do a ton of build vlogs and taking his advice on a lot of stuff. So this is going to be awkward because I'm going to be trying to teach you guys what I know while at the same time showing you guys the mistakes that I make as a first time builder, which I think is a perspective that a lot of people don't show on YouTube because most people are saying, oh, you can totally build a computer in half an hour, which I totally believe if you are experienced, but for a so for someone who is new at building computers, I think it's going to take a lot longer and I think most people would agree. So I wanna show what I know based on research and how much you can learn from just research um, and compare that to actually doing it. Uh, to start off grounding yourself, you're obviously working with electrical components, um, so you don't want to shock things and whatnot. So since I don't have an anti-static bracelet or anything like that, um, I'm not wearing anything particularly staticky. The ground is tile, I'm wearing rubber, uh, flip-flops right now there's not a lot of like polyester and stuff going on with my clothes so i think i'm okay on that front um but also just in case uh, since i am in a basement the humidity is pretty low um due to my dehumidifier but uh he said to plug in your power supply don't turn it on and touch this periodically reason being is that the power supply has a ground to it so obviously if you touch it it'll discharge any voltage and stuff from your body and it won't go to your components uh, and I have that plugged into the wall again not turned on just touching it periodically to discharge yourself every now and then I'll do that again I'm going to be installing the processor the RAM uh, the cooler and then seeing if it boots up so I'm gonna step away from this view and actually give some close-ups and again explain what I'm doing as I'm going there um, so yeah let's go ahead and cut to the close-ups all right, so one other thing I forgot to mention while I zoomed out of why I'm doing things I'm doing, he said, or Linus Edis has said, to put your motherboard on a non-conducting surface. And he said the motherboard box is generally a good idea because it's made of cardboard. Um, I have a cloth, tablecloth here, so I technically could just put it on that, but I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it. Um, so the CPU is right in the middle of the computer, obviously. You want to lift up this tab and open that up, but I'm not gonna do that just yet because I don't have the CPU out of the case or a little protective plastic. Um, so when you're lining up the CPU, there is a little triangle somewhere on the PCB right around where the uh, socket is. And on the corner of the chip, there's also a corresponding gold triangle, which is right there on this chip. So you wanna line it up so the orientation matches up here, here. Uh, you wanna lift up the lever put it down and make sure it's seated. There are also um, little circular notches that uh, help line up the CPU in the socket. And again, make sure that the triangles match up and then basically close the latch down, but make sure that this part, the little uh, wings here go under this screw. Um, once you do that, push down, a little bit of force, a little bit of creaking is okay. When you push it down all the way and latch it in, this plastic bit should come right off. So that went as expected, which is all fine and dandy. So now the CPU is installed. Next, we want to go on to the RAM. And most motherboards have four RAM slots, uh, dual channel, and you want to make sure you look up on your motherboard manual which slots are prioritized or which ones will give you basically the best performance. I already looked at the manual. It's for this motherboard, it's the black slots or number two and number four when you're looking at it from here, one, two, three, four. So you want to open up the dims here, which I guess these on the left or my left, your right are always open. Um, and then you're going to look at the notch on the RAM in the middle, line it up with the notch here. Obviously it only goes one way. You see there's a notch here and a notch here that doesn't line up. Um, you want the notches to line up and then put it basically straight down and apply even pressure and they should snap in. 
just like that. That's not what I wanted. Okay. And then repeat with the second stick of RAM, again, in the corresponding uh, RAM slot, which again, for me, is black. All right. So they automatically snap into place, um, at least the ones on the sides. If they don't, just kind of push it in there, um, push down, and then pull the tabs in until they fully snap, which it looks like this one, there it is, has a little bit of coaxing to do. So right now I have the CPU installed. I have the RAM sticks installed, pretty simple. Uh, now I'm going to cut to installing the CPU, which is probably, or the CPU cooler rather, which is probably gonna take, again, the bulk of this video. All right, so I guess this is more so going to be in how to install a all-in-one liquid cooler bit rather than just showing how to build part of the PC. Um, but this is part of the PC building process. I am timing myself to see how long it takes to do this with video. So in spirit, let's get on to it. Um, so I know I want to have this in a pool configuration, meaning I want the fans to be pulling air through the radiator rather than pushing it through. Um, again, courtesy of Linus Tech Tips, who says you should do that because less dust will get stuck between the fans and the radiator and makes cleaning a little bit easier. So these are the two fans that come with this. These are Cool Master Silencio fans, which are supposed to give high static pressure. Um, I guess you can't see them, can you? <laughs> give you high static pressure while at the same time being fairly quiet. So it's good for radiator use. So let's see, on fans, there tend to be, which side is it on? It would be on the last side I look at. There are little arrows here, you probably can't see them, but it shows the direction of the airflow and it means it's going this way. Also, wherever the crossbars are, the little support structures on the back, the back of the fan is the direction that it blows. So since it's on this side, it's going this way. Um, and the same goes for this one because they're obviously identical. But in case you ever get um, confused, there is an arrow on one of the sides that shows which direction the air is flowing. So since, again, I want it to be pulling air um, and the air is flowing this way, I want the fans to be here. And if you think about it, the inside of the case would be on this side of the radiator because that's where the pump is on that side and it'll be pulling air through. So that's my logic for that. Hopefully it works. Now, something that Cooler Master offers with the Nepton and some other coolers is this little rubber gasket here that's supposed to minimize reduction or is supposed to reduce vibrations because it's silicon and it will kind of dampen the vibrations that come from the fans. So you're supposed to put these on and then put the fans on top and then screw them in. So we're gonna try that now. So these are the long screws that you'll need. There are eight of them, four for each fan. Um, I am dumb enough and did not for some reason get a screwdriver here, but I guess these are thumb screws. So we'll thumb screw them in first and then we'll screw them in the rest with an actual screwdriver. So um, I'm probably gonna fast forward through this or cut through it, um, but let's try and install one of these first. I'm gonna wanna put the long screw through the, you know what, I'm stupid because that's not how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yes. Put the silicon gasket and try to line the holes up while fighting this tubing here while it wants to spring back on you. I should also mention that I didn't actually read the instructions for this. I'm just kind of going off of intuition. Um, so that could get me in trouble. It probably will actually. Um, but yeah, intuition is not something you normally want to do or use things. You want to consult the instruction manuals, but again, I've seen a ton of people do this already. So we're gonna put the long screw through and we are going to lightly tighten that. Again, put the long screw through the fan and through the hole in the gasket, find the hole in the radiator and screw that down as well, lightly. And we're just gonna continue this until we get this all on. So I'm not gonna make you guys watch this, but I'll stop the video and cut back to whenever I'm done with this. 